MMA Fighting presents Timeline, Alex Pereira versus Khalil Roundtree. July 8th, 2016, the Ultimate Fighter 23 finale, Las Vegas, Nevada. After two knockout victories and one submission loss in exhibition bouts on the reality show The Ultimate Fighter, the 4-0 Roundtree makes his official UFC debut against hard-nosed wrestler Andrew Sanchez. Roundtree would lose by decision. The following November, Roundtree would go on to lose his second fight in the UFC, this time to Tyson Pedro in Australia by rear naked choke. February 4th, 2017, UFC Fight Night, Bermudez versus Korean Zombie, Houston, Texas. Now 0-2 in the UFC, Roundtree is booked with Daniel Jolly in the Curtain Jerker. In a must-win situation, Roundtree wins by knockout less than a minute into the opening round. Well, here's the thing. After the fight in Australia, you know, like, I took it okay. I wasn't upset or anything, but just going back and kind of reevaluating my training and reevaluating my mindset, I thought, you know, I could have beat that guy. I know I had everything it takes to beat that guy, and I just didn't have my head screwed in the right direction. You know, so, um, you know, when I landed, as soon as I landed, you know, I got a call that the UFC would offer me another fight, and I thought, what a perfect opportunity to just get straight and get focused. And so now, um, you know, I went to work, man. Every day was work. That's why I started looking at it. Like, I have this, this awesome opportunity. I have this awesome platform with a ton of great people, and I don't want this to go away yet. So I like if you realize that I just had to go to work, man, and had to put in, you know, a lot of effort and that's been the focus. You know, it's this is work for me now and I'll celebrate when I get a belt. <laughs> I have a strong vision, you know, I have a strong vision for more than just being a champion, but um but for the world. And so I realized that in order for me to get my vision across to the world, I've got to I've got to make something of myself first, you know. I'm in the, you know, I'm I'm in this to to uh, make my name known and then to spread, you know, spread my vision in, in my hand. But at first, I got to show up. I got to fight. I got to get people to know who I am. Roundtree would go on to defeat Paul Craig by first round knockout in Scotland the following July, moving his UFC record to an even two and two. December 30th, 2017, UFC 219, Cyborg versus Holm, Las Vegas, Nevada. Roundtree is set to face Polish brawler Mikhail Oleksiejczyk. Comes Khalil Roundtree, the last fighter set to make weight. It's 9.58 a.m. Pacific, so we could wrap this up before 10 a.m., which was pretty darn quick. 2.05. And the warhorse hits his mark. That's 2.05 for Khalil Roundtree. Has won his last two fights in a row. Looking to make it three in a row on Saturday at UFC 219. Roundtree would initially lose by decision, but it would be overturned to a no contest when Oleg Zaychek was issued a one-year suspension for performance-enhancing drugs. July 7th, 2018, UFC 226. Miocic versus Cormier, Las Vegas, Nevada. For the first time, the 28-year-old Roundtree is booked on the main card of a pay-per-view this time against 34-year-old kickboxing legend Gokan Saki. In a star-making performance, Roundtree knocks out the glory kickboxing veteran in the first round. The knockout earns Roundtree his first UFC performance bonus. I turned it around this, this time because before I would want to do a lot of things for the fans. This time... I just like, I saw the fans, but it wasn't something that I was like, oh, I'm gonna put on a performance. Like I needed this for myself. So what it felt like was just, it just like, I just kind of like knocked the big demon off my shoulder or something, you know, I was just like, boop, like, okay, like what's next? Like, it wasn't something that was really like uplifting or I, it's, it's hard to really explain, yeah. but it's just like, I don't know if, if you've, I've dealt with a lot. And so for it to finally be over, I'm not like, Hooray, but I'm like, now I can continue to, to like, I got a win, got some extra money, can take care of my family the way that I want to and move forward and get better and just progress in life. So it was, it was a different feeling than previous knockouts. Yeah, it wasn't a hurrah. It wasn't a, you know, like it, it was definitely different. Like it, I, I just feel myself, I feel myself growing and moving forward. So unfortunately, the momentum would end quickly. 
rising prospect Johnny Walker would knock out Roundtree by vicious elbow in his next fight in Argentina. April 13th, 2019, UFC 236, Holloway versus Poirier 2, Atlanta, Georgia. Despite the loss, the UFC books Roundtree on the pay-per-view portion of the now legendary card. Roundtree defeats Eric Anders by unanimous decision in a lopsided and eye-opening performance. I realize that like fighting in the UFC, it's really hard to, to really embrace it and grow without like having to win, 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 win. You have to win in order to stay here. And that's a lot of pressure for someone who really loves fighting and wants to be the best and wants to be my best. But then I have this hanging over my head where it's like, but if you lose, like you may not be able to have that shot again. So like that pressure and dealing with like, I could lose my job. I could lose all of these opportunities just based off of a mistake or maybe not feeling it that morning or something. Like there's so many things that play into what we go through emotionally or what I go through. I'm an emotional guy. So um, this week and today I was just like, you know what? Like I just got to do whatever I want to do and not think about if I'm going to get cut or win or lose or like I'm going to I'm going to display the best version of myself and just I had a vision of what it would be like to win and I went and I just followed that you know I followed exactly what I wanted to see after I visualized getting my hand raised I visualized slapping hands with the crowd right after I visualized going to the doctor in the back and seeing my check with win and you know a show and win money signing it I visualized my brother my coaches everybody being excited and that was the only thing that I visualized this entire like maybe the past week and a half. And um, that was just kind of the goal for me. Like, just as long as those things happen, that's the best, so. What kind of However, Roundtree would go on to lose his next two matchups, a knockout loss to Iwan Kuchalaba in Denmark, and a decision loss to Marcin Praknio on the UFC 257 Poirier versus McGregor two card. This would be Roundtree's second losing streak in the UFC. September 4th, 2021, UFC Vegas 36, Brunson versus Till, Las Vegas, Nevada. Now riding a two-fight skid, Roundtree faces former Cage Warriors champion Modestus Bukaskis at the UFC Apex. In a return to form, Roundtree wins by dynamic violence with a sidekick to the knee in round two. November 6th, 2021, UFC 268, Usman vs. Covington 2, New York, New York. The former glory kickboxing champion makes his UFC debut at Madison Square Garden on the prelims against the 13-4 Andreas Michaelitis. Pereira wins by flying knee KO 18 seconds into round two and improves his MMA record to 3-1. Pereira also takes home his first $50,000 performance of the night bonus. The, the debut of uh, Alex Pereira, obviously a lot of people saying he might have the path to Adesanya after their kickboxing background. What were just your general thoughts? He looked damn good tonight, you know. Um, he did a great job defending the takedown and then, you know, got the guy where he needed him and incredible flying knee. March 12th, 2022, UFC Vegas 50, Santos versus Ankalaev, Las Vegas, Nevada. Pereira is booked in the apex for the first time, opposite the 22-7 Bruno Silva. The minus 200 favorite Pereira wins by unanimous decision. But I was I was actually really impressed with Alex Pereira tonight. Like he could have gone out there and delivered a two-minute knockout, but the fact that he went three rounds, the fact that he overcame some adversity, he had to do some different things. He had a battle. He had to do some takedown defense. But was it the prettiest fight of all time? No. But did he go out there and do the damn thing against a tough season guy? Yeah. I, I wasn't wasn't shabby at all. Jed, would you throw him into a matchup with the top 10 guy right now? Would you throw him in there with Sean Strickland? I would throw him in there with Derek Brunson tomorrow. I His power does really impress the hell out of me because... He has to have like super dense bones or something. Yeah. Cause he barely, he barely like swings and it's thudding power. It's not like, ooh, precisely click. It's just like, 
the whole body is shifting of Bruno Silva. It was a thick dude. And so, like, it is – that was the thing that was the most impressive to me is just, like, how much he could move Silva's body by what appeared to just be lightly tapping him. Just two fights after that, Khalil Roundtree faces former glory kickboxer Carl Roberson. Roundtree wins by hooks and body kicks early into round two. A highly violent finish earns him a performance bonus. For the next Khalil that's maybe sitting on his couch right now, a little bit overweight, um, what's your message to him? Hmm. It might sound a bit cliche or we've heard this before, but like your life matters. (sighs) (sighs) Your life matters. You can be special. You can be strong. You can be seen. You can be heard. Life is beautiful. If you make it that way, doesn't have to be how everybody else makes it seem. Stick around. (laughs) Stick around another day. I would have a lot of a lot of things like that to say, man. Thank you. Absolutely. I felt like anytime I would fight and win, then that's when people want to speak to me. And that's when people want to ask me questions and still the like, you know, MMA media would want to ask me questions, but still it was questions along the lines of like, who do you want to fight next or this? And I'm like, all of that stuff is cool. But like for me personally and how I even got into MMA, it's so far off from, you know, so far off from like my real mission, you know? And and a lot of the conversations are about like, oh, you know, who do you want to fight next or champion? Or do you see yourself at top 10 and who's the best striker and this and that. And, and to me, a lot of that stuff really doesn't matter. It's not like in my brain on a day-to-day basis. So, I think um, I think just with time and and life and maturity, I have finally come to a point where I realize like, hey, I, I have to take control over the things that I want to speak about and the things that I want to do, whether I'm winning or losing, whether I'm a champion or not. Um, I just want to take the opportunity to be able to, um, you know, expand my outreach as much as I can um, before it's all over, you know, before all the fighting stuff is over. About 19 is when just everything kind of hit me. People were going to college, some people were getting jobs, and you know, I was living in a one bedroom apartment with my mom, my brother, my niece, my sister, uh, struggling to make $750 rent meet every month. And I had no idea of what I wanted to be in life or what I wanted to do or what I could even do because at the time, 19 years old, 305 pounds, two packs of cigarettes a day, soda only, you know, you know, if someone had pills, I'm like, oh yeah, I'll take some, not even knowing what they are, you know, just, just really just lost and with no hope or no, no, you know, I never didn't even care. I, like, I don't care if I wake up today, I don't, you know, I'm going to drink myself and hope that I don't wake up tomorrow, you know, like with like those type of thoughts until, um, you know, I, my brother was watching MMA. I saw a little bit about what that was and kind of uh, attached to this 
this aggression and, and kind of anger that it seemed like these guys had, especially after seeing Rampage rip down a door on the Ultimate Fighter. I'm like, yeah, that's what I want to do. You know, I was like, yeah, I want to do that. You mean if I do train MMA, I can just break a door down with my bare hands? Absolutely. So um, it was just, it was a mixture of like, you know, being exposed to MMA and then just feeling like I just wanted to just like explode or give up. And yeah, that was, that was at 19. And that's when, that's when I just decided I'm, I'm going to start. July 2nd, 2022, UFC 276, Adesanya versus Cannoneer, Las Vegas, Nevada. Pereira makes his pay-per-view debut against top-ranked middleweight Sean Strickland on the UFC's annual International Fight Week card. Bom, tô focado na minha luta, né, com o Sean Strickland. É, todo mundo sabe, nas minhas entrevistas eu venho sempre falando, venho sempre priorizando isso. Né? Well, I'm focused on my fight Saturday. I still got the fight to do with Strickland. I'm focused 100% on that fight, but I'm rooting for Israel. Who's the best striker on stage? I mean, I would say no. me, but I mean, that man was the one that slept that man, so, you know, next to me, next to me, probably Alex. I mean, what was it like, 2-0 against Izzy? Izzy, what was it, 2-0? I'll break your fucking butt. face. Hey, I'll Alex, break my nail in your get face. This man, Alex, get this. Hey, man, you better focus on your guy. He's gonna fuck you up, too. Yeah, the way he fucking slept your ass. And guess what? Like I said, focus on this guy. He's a tough opponent, and you focus on him as well. They've been asked more about me this whole fucking fight camp than each other. So you need to focus on the work you're doing, because trust me, he will sleep you Hey, Izzy, why don't you tell me what not to do? <laughs> do you have a preference who wins between Strickland and Pedeta? No, they're both big money fights. This guy talks a lot, and this guy's already beaten me twice in kickboxing. And funny thing is, I asked you guys the press at the press conference, who's actually watched the fight? Five people in a room full of 25 put their hands up, and two were my managers. So only three reporters have watched the fight. Trust me, he knows I put him on skates last time. And this time when I put you on skates, I'm gonna leave you frozen like Elsa. In an absolute star-making performance, Pereira easily disposes of Strickland by knockout with his signature left hook halfway into the opening round. The knockout of the year contender would also earn Pereira his second $50,000 bonus. Uh, é outros lutadores, não sei por quê, né? Talvez não aconteceu da mesma forma com eles. E é isso. Absolutely, a lot of people talk, especially fighters, you know? They think they have a chance over me, but, you know, like, you know, ahead of me. So, feel good to prove that, and, you know, because by the end of the day, it's what the people want, and the people want to see knockouts. People want to see the style that I fight. People want to see whoever is in front of me get knocked out. That's what I bring for them. November 12th, 2022, UFC 281, Adesanya versus Pereira, New York, New York. After achieving three straight victories and two performance bonuses, Pereira is set to face longtime rival and UFC middleweight champion, Israel Adesanya. This will be the third time they meet, the first two coming in the kickboxing world. Well, boa noite. Hey. hey. First of all, good evening to everybody here. I know it's a great event here. You know, as I said, it's talking a lot. I train a lot for this to be in this moment. I just signed it's talking about me. You know, it's going to be difficult to accept a knockout. Can you really be sure going into Saturday night that there's nothing in this for you that's personal? You know what? We're talking about MMA. Uh, you know, we all know what happened in the last two fights. I forgot about him. I, I hope you forgot as well. I'm going to fight you like it was the first time I was fighting in my life. You know, there's a lot of people that think maybe that they thought I was undeserving, including Adesanya and his team. Originally, he said, so when I came into the UFC, that he wanted to fight me. As soon as I started to fight people, they changed the narrative. They spun things around that they said, oh, maybe. They started to run around. They said, maybe I don't want to face him again. I think I kind of screwed his mind a little bit, and he, uh, he's a little bit unbalanced psychologically on this one. Você vai estar sozinho lá dentro do octógono. You, I don't speak be, Portuguese. You're going to be alone inside that octagon without a team. Oh, yes, you and me. Don't worry, but they're going to be with me. They're going to be with me in spirit. Trust me. You can't. They can't save you either. They can't save you. Hey. All this shit. Don't worry. Hey, he's got bragging rights. Talk all the shit you want. Talk all the Yo, shit man. you want. Because trust me, they can't save you either when you're locked in there with me. 
Ei, Alessânia, deixa eu te fazer uma pergunta. Você quer estar aqui realmente? Caralho, I can't understand what this guy is saying, man. Do you really want to be here? I am here. I am here. After four rounds of competitive action, Pereira stuns the Madison Square Garden crowd as he gets a standing TKO two minutes into the final round and becomes the UFC middleweight champion after only four fights in the promotion and just eight MMA fights overall. Uh, you know, kind of how you felt things were going over the course of the fight because you, you were down on the cards going into that last round. Bom, eu sabia que era uma luta dura. A gente está falando do campeão, do, do ex-campeão. É, um cara que estava batendo em todo mundo e eu sabia o que eu tinha pela frente e foi o que eu imaginei, né, o que eu imaginava, né, uma luta dura, de porrada ali. Eu, tem, eu tinha a minha estratégia que eu estava tentando aplicar. Welcome to this fight. I knew it was going to be a very hard fight. You know, tried everything, tried to pace myself, but going to the last round, my corners and Glover kept it real with me. Look in my eyes and say, I look at him action and I say, do I have to knock him out? And Glover say, you do have to knock him out. And then I say, okay, let's do it. April 8th, 2023, UFC 287, Herrera versus Adesanya 2, Miami, Florida. The rematch is set. Herrera puts his newly won middleweight title on the line against the man he took it from just a few months before at Madison Square Garden in Israel Adesanya. But Saturday night, time for talking is done. I'm gonna show him my fighting spirit. And you all know I have that shit. And for you, Izzy, on, on Saturday, what is most important to you? Is it about regaining the UFC title and being world champion again, or is it simply beating Fuck the champion? belt, I'm coming for his head. This fight, like I've said, this is my eight-mile eight moment. This is it. One more shot at this. I put everything on my back. I've done everything in my power to make sure I do the worst thing to this man this weekend. I'm, I'm done with this talking shit. You guys want to hear me talk or you want to hear me fight? Ele fez isso nas últimas três lutas. Ele falou a mesma coisa e não fez. Who did this the past three fights? He said the same things and there's always that. I don't even understand what I said. Not understand what you said. What's going to happen this weekend is we're going to fight and see who the best man is at the end. Ele me faz rir. He makes me laugh. In dramatic and violent fashion, the last style bender gets his revenge and knocks out Pereira four minutes into round two. It would go down as one of the most iconic knockouts and celebrations in UFC history. It would also be the last time Pereira would compete at middleweight. July 29th, 2023, UFC 291, Poirier versus Gaethje 2, Salt Lake City, Utah. Alex Pereira officially makes the move to 205 pounds as he makes his light heavyweight debut against top ranked fighter and former champion Jan Blachowicz. Obviously, Jamal Hill has vacated the belt, so I'm curious, do you view this as the number one contender fight for a possible fight for a vacant title? Com certeza, né? Tá tudo certo já. Pô, quero fazer essa luta, meu foco é essa luta, e mais com certeza, vamos para a próxima, ganhando essa o cinturão. Surely the focus, I mean, everything's pretty much, the writing is on the wall. Obviously, my focus is on this fight, but winning this fight, let's go for the championship. Herrera wins a hard-fought, competitive split decision. I was incredibly impressed by that. And I'm just generally incredibly impressed by Alex Pereira and sort of what he's been able to do at this point in his career. Like, this man, I, I know you you said it on the, on the, on the post show, or on the, the presser show, Jed, because I tweeted it, but like Alex Pereira is speed running a potential Hall of Fame UFC career in record time in a way that I've really never seen anyone ever do it. And it's absolutely absurd when you think about it because less than two years ago, this man was fighting the immortal Andreas Michaelitis uh, as just like this weird novelty. We're like, hey, maybe this will just be like a fun thing we can talk about until he inevitably loses and we don't get the Izzy fight. And now like less than two years later, I think it's like 20 months, UFC belt hanging above his mantelpiece can call himself the only middleweight to beat Izzy in, in MMA in MMA in the UFC. One of only two light heavyweights now to beat yeah, nice. Uh to beat Jan Bakovitz <laughs> in this division's post Jones era. And he's one win away from becoming the eighth two division champion in UFC history. Like that's a hell of a resume for anyone, much less someone who has less than 10 MMA fights on their resume. Like it's it's nonsensical. It's ridiculous. Um but tonight was impressive, man. Like Jan Blakovic is no one's fool, and 
Yeah, Alex Pereira went in there. I thought he showed really improved takedown defense. He stopped eight, five of those eight takedowns. Pretty decent submission defense in that first round. He was thrust into a really tough spot. Alex Pereira versus Yuri is the fight this division deserves, right? Like this, that's the title fight. That that is a fight of the year contender on paper. If I have ever seen one, that those two Tasmanian Devils are just the, carry like the best version of unpredictability and the death touch and all of it. Like that, that is a matchup that screams chaos. November eleventh, twenty twenty three, UFC two ninety five, Prohashka versus Pereira. New York, New York. Poetan returns to Madison Square Garden as the main event as he battles former champion Yuri Prohashka for the vacant light heavyweight title. Um, Alex, uh, with this fight, um, with a win now in the title, you would be a part of a select group of athletes that have been champions in two uh, weight divisions, especially the first Brazilian since Amanda Nunes. Um, a record also uh, because of seven fights. Would you look at other records? Is the, is it important for you? Is this record chasing in any capacity? What other records are you chasing? Bom, quando eu cheguei na organização, é, o meu intuito né, era me tornar campeão, fazer as lutas que eu poderia fazer para chegar até ali, né, ser campeão. Foi o que eu fiz. Uh, when I came into the UFC, my goal was to be a champion. That's what I wanted to be, and I was able to accomplish that. Uh, and then it just kind of happened naturally. If you think about it, I've, I've mentioned the like, middle got got hard for me. I've, I've spoken about that. You all know about uh, the weight and how it's so much better right now. And it happened now and having an opportunity to be a champion in another division. I don't know after that. I, we'll see what happens. Pereira wins by TKO four minutes into round two and now becomes a two weight world champion in the UFC. Bom, é, significa muito para mim, né? Esse é o resultado de um trabalho bem feito nesses longos, longos anos, né? E, pô, essa conquista agora, pô, claro, sempre difícil, né? Mas muito importante. É onde eu consigo, né, mostrar um pouco para as pessoas, né, que às vezes não acreditam. It means a lot to me to be able to conquer this after so many years of training and dedication. And also it's very important for me to be able to show to everybody, you know what I mean? Everybody know where I came from, my humble beginnings. So to get here and achieve this is a, is a, is a big achievement for me. December 9th, 2023, UFC Vegas 83, Song versus Gutierrez, Las Vegas, Nevada. After two more victories in the UFC, a split decision over glory veteran Dustin Jacoby and a knockout victory over Chris Dacus, Roundtree is matched up with top 10 ranked and former title challenger Anthony Smith in his fifth straight Apex undercard bout. What does the win over Anthony Smith do for your career? The fact that this fight is co-main event is a great, you know, warm up to a main event and being able to, I guess, even be worthy of having a main event. So, yeah, man. Roundtree dominates the aging vet and knocks him out early in round three, earning his fourth performance bonus. Usually the main event is the story. I think the story is Khalil Roundtree here in New York, Rick. What a performance against Anthony Smith. And look, what a crazy knockout, man. Lands that short little counter uppercut and then lands that left hand. And Smith was just doing the stanky leg and he goes down and Khalil Roundtree just being the martial artist, the human being that he is, just stood over Anthony, let Mark Smith come in and stop it, gets the win, and then he gets the microphone, and he calls out Alex Pereira in, in the most Khalil Roundtree way possible. And I have to say, this was good stuff. This is really good stuff. He did the thing, New York Rick. How do you grade Khalil Roundtree's performance in the fight and then on the microphone after the fight? Yeah, he aced it. This is an A+. Would I be surprised if they even threw him into a title shot now? I really wouldn't. I mean, it's, I think there's plenty of opportunities where we've seen next man up, and I think Khalil Roundtree would be ready for that opportunity, as he said. Uh, so I would be, I, I would be, not shocked if it was next. I don't expect it to be next, uh, and if it's not next, I think he's one away at most. Correct me if I'm wrong. You don't usually call out fighters in post-fight interviews, but you did mention the champion this time, which got a lot of people excited. Why did you do that this time? Yeah, this was the first time I've ever said like another name on the microphone post fight. Um, I think this is a part of also the positive feedback from the fans. 
after after Alex's last fight, I did see that a lot of people were tagging me and saying like this would be a great matchup. And I watched that fight and I watched all of Alex's fights and I'm like, yeah, I mean, it would be a great matchup. My fans like to see me strike and his fans like to see him strike. And like, you know, we both have an intensity about us. We both have, um, I feel like a good fighter spirit, you know, uh, Alex, I, I think that just like from, from a from a uh, from a fan standpoint, I think that it's just a fight that's just like, yeah, that's a sick fight. You know, I'm not necessarily. I I, I hope that people don't think that that was me saying I deserve a title shot because that's not my intentions at all. You know, like that's not what I'm calling for. I'm not on this tear and being like, you know, I've done so much of a tear that I deserve a title shot. No, it's just more of like. If that's what the fans want to see, then then let's make it happen versus like putting me versus, you know, someone else who is probably just going to try to wrestle me, which I'm okay with, but I don't think that it's as exciting for for my fans. Let's just say if I'm responsible for my fans, my fans want to see me fight another striker. Because people like to see me strike. I've never shot a takedown in my life. <laughs> yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? I would love so to that, see it. That, that's more of like that. That's kind of like a more clear view on like the intention. So this time next year, December of 2024, where are you at in your career? December 2024. Yeah, a year from now, is a champion. Yeah, I'm definitely the champion in my career. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I'm definitely the champion, and I'd say it would be this would be the prime time being the champion that I can start to do something that involves the city of Las Vegas. Something, you know, like I I, I think that that's like being a champion in Las Vegas for me, like they kind of go hand in hand. Like I not only do I want to do this for myself, but I want to do this for my city. I feel like the city deserves a UFC champion and there will be a, a, a there will be a champion from Las Vegas one day. Hopefully I'm the first, <laughs> you know, and then like hopefully I can be that. And then, you know, the kids on the east side of Las Vegas can see like, oh, there was a guy from here. The first ever UF, the first ever UFC champion was from Las Vegas. I can go join a gym. I can also do this because we, what can we be in Las Vegas other than like entertainers or like casino tenders or, you know, just keep the city alive. So maybe, you know, there's a, a young kid out there or will be a young kid out there that needs to know that it's, it's possible, you know, to be a champion out of Las Vegas, <laughs> you, you know, like, if nothing else, you know, if you don't know where you're going in life, you don't know if you don't think you're smart enough to go to college and you're not, you know, strong enough to defend yourself. Well, there's plenty of gyms here and you can go and be a champion if nothing else, you know, like, yeah, okay. you're just like how I was, man. I was afraid to go to the military. Didn't think I was smart enough for college. You know, I'm mediocre at playing any instruments. Yeah, you know, all these things. I'm like, well, what am I going to do then? <laughs> you know, I'm just going to work at Jimmy Jobs like I was, or I'm going to work at a fight shop and, you know, just work a job and hopefully get better and get promoted to manager. And I was like, nah, I mean, that's cool, but I feel like there's more, especially like with who my father was, you know? Like, so, yeah, next year, champion, and then like trying to do something, trying to do something you know, for the city, like trying to make at least the foundation of a mark on the city, whether it's like a gym or, you know, boys and girls club or just like something that just like, is like, I can't like, I'm from Las Vegas. I've left the mark on the city. And like, now I can go and enjoy my life elsewhere. And just like, I I've left something at home. <laughs> I've left something there for, you know, for the, for, for the people. 
April 13th, 2024, UFC 300, Herrera versus Hill, Las Vegas, Nevada. In a surprise move by the UFC, Dana White announces that Alex Pereira will headline the landmark event. His opponent, former champion, and the man who defeated Pereira's mentor, Glover Teixeira, Jamal Hill. I see the interesting choice of water bottle right there. Can you speak a little bit more about it? Uh, you know, just uh, just getting acquainted with the visual that I plan on seeing on Saturday night. I'm gonna hold that head hey, up high. Eu vou fazer, eu vou fazer ele lembrar desse momento aqui quando eu estiver entrando no octógono, quando estiver tocando a minha música, ele vai lembrar desse momento. I'll make him remember this moment when I'm in my walkout, about to go into the octagon, and my music is playing. I'll make him remember this moment. Write it down. Take a picture. I don't give a fuck. We getting it in. When you step in there with me, ain't nothing to talk about. Ain't nothing to say. It's all right here and I'm on your ass. Herrera knocks out the former champion in devastating fashion three minutes into round one. June 29th, 2024. UFC 303. Herrera versus Brahachka 2. Las Vegas, Nevada. Originally announced to be the return of Conor McGregor, Pereira and Prohachka accept the late notice main event booking after McGregor is forced to withdraw due to a toe injury. Uh, but on Yuri said they're using some sort of sorcery, some magic, some some things uh, from the beyond. Uh, that's what Yuri said about you. Uh, what would you like to comment on that? Eu acho que a gente, todo mundo, né, tem um espírito. É, eu acho que a gente não vive só só de corpo, né? É, eu acho que Talvez ele não tenha encontrado o dele, né? E como eu falei ontem, é, eu não tenho culpa. Um, you know, I think everyone has a spirit. We don't just live in a body. Uh, he, if he hasn't found his spirit yet, it's not my fault. After Pereira drops the former champ and nearly finishes at the end of round one, the champion stops Prohachka with a brutal head kick only 13 seconds into round two. And the high kick that you landed, did you come off the stool in a second knowing you were going to throw that, or was it just something you saw at the moment? No, actually, I was in the locker room talking to Plinio, my coaches, and uh, he showed me the video of Giri warming up, and I saw that he was trying to counterattack the calf kick, the fan and counter. But I told Plinio that he was doing the wrong timing. The timing was not good. So I saw that he was too focused on not taking that kick and he was keeping hands down and leaving the head, you know, the head exposed. So I told him I said, I want to explore the high kick. October 5th, 2024, UFC 307, Pereira versus Roundtree, Salt Lake City, Utah. Alex Pereira is set to main event his third pay-per-view of 2024, his fourth headlining pay-per-view in the last 12 months. He will face surging striker Khalil Roundtree for the UFC Light Heavyweight Championship. A lot of fans have deemed you the glory kickboxer killer and that Alex Pereira is sort of your final boss. He's the King Koopa. In order for you to finish the story of being the glory kickboxing killer, what would that mean to you if Dana, on top of that, gets to wrap that belt around your waist? Yeah, I mean, this is what I've been working for. You know, when I found, when I started MMA, Everything, my life changed. It all happened kind of like by accident. Uh, but I stayed strong, I stayed dedicated. Um, and I've always had a belief that, you know, this was possible. So now I'm finally here and I'm like living in this reality that was a dream. Uh, so what it means to me is, is everything. It's, it's that time that I've always seen in my mind, you know, like now it's here. And so I'm, I feel great, man. Like I'm ready for this. 